I didn't think I would get another chance to speak on stewardship. Uh, but I am so excited that I have to conclude it. I hadn't concluded. Those of you who were there from, from day one will remember that stewardship was defined differently. We say stewardship is managing the image of God in us. When God said, let us create man in our own image, he wanted to create himself. He was trying to create other beings like him so that they would do things the way he does them. So they would walk the way he walks and he would enjoy looking at his sons. You know how God enjoys looking at his sons doing things. How do I know that? God the Father is not recorded as having created anything. The Bible records the creator as his son. As he was standing, he was watching his son do great things. He says, son, create. And the son said, let there be, let there be, let there be. And it was so. And he even placed salvation upon his son and says, oh, that belief for God so loved the world that he gave his son, that all that believe in the son would be saved. So, so God is interested in, in uplifting his image, he, his sons and daughters to be like him. And so when he created the world, he says, my new sons take over, have dominion and, and enjoy the earth and, and look after it the way I would look after it. Are you listening to me today? And so stewardship is managing the image of God because once the image of God in us is, is back to where it was supposed to be, we will do things the way God would love to do them. You know, even Jesus said, greater things than these shall ye do. Because we are his sons, he's expecting, just like you have a son. I, I, I was in Mrs. Bosiria's car today and her son was driving. She was seated at the back. And, and I enjoyed it. I was seated in the front with the sun. And I, I said to, my, to myself, this is the sermon that I preached on day one. Are you listening to me today? The sun doing things. When I saw my daughter for the first time, I was filled with joy. I ceased to exist. I then began to exist in my child. Are you listening to me today? And so when we talk about stewardship and, and sacrifice, you don't have to teach me how to give my child. Naturally, because I have that connection, I will sacrifice. And so that is why stewardship is going to, in this direction. Let's bow our heads in prayer as we start today. Father in heaven, we are grateful for your goodness. We are grateful for this opportunity. Help us now as we explore your mind. We are about to enter your mind, the Bible, that you poured out into papers. We don't want to touch holy things with filthy hands. And so I am chief among sinners. I, play, I pray for the blood of Jesus. I hide behind the blood of Jesus this morning. My sinfulness does not allow me to be here, but your grace allows me to be here. And so, Lord, I don't want to speak unless you're speaking through me. I don't want to uh, even stand here unless you're standing with me. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so on day two, we talked about faith. Faith is what God is trying to achieve by tithing and offering. He's trying to develop our faith. We discovered that uh, tithing and offering were meant to be something that was tough and could only be handled by those who depended on God. And so if you depend upon yourself, you will not let go. But if you depend on God, you will let go and know that even if there is nothing left for the rest of the month, God will take care. On the third day, we talked about money. Money is the, the love of money is the root of all evil. It is the devil's weapon of mass destruction. God never intended for man and money to coexist without the knowledge of stewardship. 
And so for those who were there, we discovered in the Garden of Eden, God brought the tree of knowledge of good and evil to safeguard the relationship so the covenant may be there. So men may know his position. Men will know that if he returns a faithful tithe, this is the tithe. Or if he observes the tree of knowledge of good and evil, stand here and face me. The position of man is like this. Because you are saying, God, this tree of knowledge of good and evil reminds me of my place, which is there. But if you are not observing, sit down, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which we discovered is the tithe, you are standing up against God. And you are saying, my strength has got me this wealth. And why should I give you anything? But Deuteronomy 8, 17, 16 and 17 says, So that you may not say in your heart, My strength and my power has gotten me this wealth. You must remember the Lord, because it is he who gives the power to get wealth. So that he may strengthen the covenant and you go back to your position. And so tithing is about covenant. But the Bible in Malachi 3 says, Verse 8, you rob me in tithes and offerings. And so we spoke about tithing in detail. We want to talk about the other arm that God has brought. Now I want you to see something interesting about God. Let's go to Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39. If uh, I saw some water here, yes. Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39. I wish I had a reader. Um, and I hope somebody is going to beam it. Mr. Junta, you could read for me if it's possible. Matthew, this is the center of the plan of salvation. These verses are all that we require in order to understand. Matthew, 27, Matthew 22 is about love. Stewardship is about love. If you are managing the image of God, God's character is love. And so the image of God is about love. Now, I want you to see something interesting about Matthew, Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Quickly, I want to rush. Jesus said unto him. And Jesus said unto him. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart. With all thy heart. And with all thy soul. And with all thy soul. And with all thy mind. And with all thy might. So... This this is the first this commandment. This is the first and great commandment. Now, what the Bible here is saying is, let me see my image in you. I love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my might. And so, if you are my child, I should see that in you. You must love me the way I love you. Show me your image. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is saying, show me my image in you. The second commandment, which is like unto the first, which is verse 39, verse 39, is like unto this. It says what? And the second is like unto it. What does it Thou say? Thou shalt love thy neighbor, love thy as, neighbor thyself. as thyself. Why is God saying love your neighbor as yourself? Because he loves you as himself. And so he's saying, if I love man like I love myself, if God loved himself more than he loved us, he would have said, I'm too special to die for man. Let me look for something a little lower. Even angels are higher than man. But he says, I have put my life at the same level as yourself. This is the vertical relationship. This is the horizontal. Man to man. God to man. This is the cross of Jesus Christ. This is the character of God. Now let me show you something interesting further to that. This represents tithing. Tithing, we learned during the week that it is you having a covenant with God. So tithing is about vertical relationship. God to man. So you have shown in tithing that you have a covenant with God. You have not yet shown that your character is like God. Fully. Now, what makes God so good that we should worship him? What is the greatest act that God did that we really are in awe about? Tell me. 
The what? The self sacrifice. Yes. Plan of salvation. And the plan of salvation was done to mankind. There is nothing else that we have seen that shows God's love except what he did for man. We then also see it in creation and other things, but creation generally shows the power of God. And salvation and the plan of salvation shows the love of God. You're not listening to me today. And so there is no other way of showing God's love except with what you do for man. Oh, you're not listening to me today. How, how, how do you know that this man has the spirit of God? How do you know that? How do you measure in, when you are at home and you're looking at your neighbors and people in your community? How do you measure that this man has got the spirit of God? What do you see? What character? Do you see how, how large their Bible is? What? Kindness, mercy, and all those things are being done to who? Talk to me, church. To other men. So when people are saying this man is a godly man, they are not talking about how well you preach. Because the devil can preach. Are you listening to me today? They are talking about how you take care of other men. So you have no access to God except through men. Let me prove that to you. First John 4, 20, quickly. You have no access to God except through men. It's what you do for men that makes God see truly that his character is in you. First John 4, 20 says what? If a man say, I love God. If a man says he loves God. And hated his brother. And hated his brother. He is a liar. He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, mm. whom he has sinned, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Now listen to me. The Bible is saying, uh, you know, there are people who say I'm an introvert. I don't like people. They are a problem. I'd rather be on my own. God is saying, I love men. And you are, if you are like me, you better love men. And by the way, show love to men before you start to think you can show love to me. Are you listening to me today? And so what, is, what the Bible here is saying, let me, let me give you a very interesting thing about this. This represents tithing. This represents offering. Offering is what is given to mankind. Offering is what benefits mankind, but in honor of God. Now let me show you how this works. Tithing in Numbers 18, verse 21, go there very quickly. I want, to, I want to show you something very interesting. Tithing in Numbers 18, 21, God says, I have given to the children of Levi. They are the only ones allowed to touch tithing. Not you, not your sick child, not your old mother. No one is allowed to touch tithing except the Levites. And that is why we call them trust funds. And that is why we send them to the conference. And I, I, I have a problem with people who say, my tithe. Because you have no tithe. Tithe is a symbol that God owns everything. I would read Psalms 50 for you, for those who say my tithe. When God in verse 9 says, I will not take a bull from your crow. In fact, let me tell you something. The world and everything in it is mine. And he says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. And so the, there is no thing called my tithe. It's God's tithe. Are you listening to me today? So God's tithe, the owner of the tithe, gave it to the Levites, Numbers 18, 21. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance for their service which they serve. Even the service of the tabernacle. They the were supposed to serve in the congregation. And it was not good for you every day as you take your sacrifice to ask where the priest was. And then you were told, ah, he's busy uh, in the cultivating in the field. So God says, I'm not going to give them land to cultivate. Their land is in the temple. 
But because of their work in the temple, my tithe have I given to them. Are you listening to me today? So if you're not a Levite, don't touch tithe. So tithe is not spent at Nairobi Central. Not a cent of it remains here. So my question is, how do you bless God's people that he loves more than anything else? What do you give to the poor? What do you use to, 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 uh, uh, to build churches? What do you use for religious service like the Feast of Tabernacles? It's not the tithe, it's the offering. Are you listening to me? This is why this is a man-to-man -man affair. So, this goes back, tithing and offering go back to the Ten Commandments. Are you listening to me today? The Ten Commandments are about love for God. And that's the first four, love for man. Are you listening to me? The last six. Now, here's something that I want you to know, very simple. The question usually comes, which one should be more, tithing or offering? And I know many people ask that question. Catch a hint from God. Turn to your neighbor and say, catch a hint from God. How many commandments have to do with man to man? God to man. God to man? Four. What about man to man? Add more where God adds more. Sure. You're not listening to me today. God did not do it. He, he was not uh, uh, sleeping and he was not, he didn't misunderstand things when he put more commandments on the man to man. He expects you to put more effort and more love on the man to man. That's why he says, he who says he loves God and hated his brother is a liar. How can you love God that you have not seen? Four. And you fail to love man that you see? Six. Go to Matthew 5 very quickly. Go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. I want you to see something um, about people who love to bring tithe and they have no offering. And there are many who think tithing is all that God is looking for. Tithing is only showing you have a covenant. It does not show that you have now have the true character of love of God. Talk to me. Matthew 5 verse 22. What does it say? Very quickly. I got but no I say unto you mm. that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the 23, judgment. 23, 23, 23, 23, sorry. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar yes. and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there the gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother God is and saying, then come and offer I don't have time gift. to go through that. He says if you are bringing an offering to the altar and then you remember you have an issue with your brother. My friend, I'm not pleased with your offering unless you have reconciled with your brother. If you are bringing your tithing and you have not set aside offering, which is the one that blesses your brother, Leave your tithing on the table and go and get an offering. I didn't get an amen. amen. Not expecting it. I'm not expecting it. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, this is tithing, this is offering. Without offering, tithing is just like those women who say, we want to be called by your name. It just shows that there is a covenant, but it hasn't started showing that there is a character of God in there. God loves men more than anything else. Let me show you something interesting. Tithing is like a marriage certificate. It just shows you have a covenant with a man. It does not show how much love is in that marriage. It is how much you give in that marriage that shows that you really love your wife. We show how much we love God by what we do for man. Oh, you're not listening to me today. Some of you don't bring offering. Where do you what do you think is happening to the poor? Let, let's go to Patrick's and Prophets. Uh, uh, I want to read Ellen White's writings. Uh, chapter 51, those of you with it in, in, on tablets, I want you to see something interesting. On tablets of stone. I mean, I it, it says um, uh, chapter 51 of Patrick's and Prophets. Uh, uh, the chapter is called God's Care for the Poor. Ellen White has something that she writes about tithing and offering. 
And I want you to understand that a tithing, if you bring tithing without offering, you have not completed the circuit. You have tried to show that you have a covenant with God, but you have not yet fully represented the character of God. Now, it says to promote the assembly of people for religious service, as well as to provide for the poor, a second tithe was required. That second tithe is supported by the Bible. I don't have time. I'll teach, I'll teach you that. From Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 29, if you go to Deuteronomy 26 from 12 to 15, it talks about a tithe that is eaten sometimes in your household. What they would do is first year they would take it to the church. Second year they would take it to the church. Third year they would consume it at home with the poor and the strangers surrounding them. What was God trying to do? Number one, first year coming to the church he wanted people to know that at central church you can get help there are people there with the spirit of god and so your offering is supposed to go part of it to the poor the other religious service we are struggling with camp meeting budget we shouldn't if everyone was giving a proper offering that is at least equal or above your tithing sure so she talks about a second tithe she says the first tithe was given to the levites she gives a verse of numbers 13 21 you can go to the next paragraph she gives the verses in regard to the first tithe it was given to the legals levites but in regard to the second you were allowed to eat so my question to you is Show me your budget for the poor. Where is your budget for the poor? Your budget for the poor is something we must see. And don't say I give it away on my own. The Bible clearly says, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 22, it says thou shalt, you must bring it to the place where the Lord has brought his name. We have rich individuals but a poor church. Because everyone is busy giving away their offerings and, and looking good and getting all the praise. And the church cannot do powerful programs for the poor and for camp meeting. So that means God had a system. First year to the church. Second year to the church. Third year you then would give it away. Are you listening to me today? So let the tithing and offering come to the storehouse. If all of us were to bring an equivalent amount as we give tithing, this church would do wonders. This is biblical. This is there in spirit of prophecy. Are you listening to me today? Now, let me, let me end with, with three things that I want you to know. Do I go there? Do I go there? Do I not? Do I go there? Okay, I don't have time for it. Um, but um, I've got five minutes, so I'm not going to go there. Now, I want you to see something interesting. Sit down, guys. Now, this, this one here, guys, my, my brothers and sisters, this one here is the apple of God's eye. If, if Adventism was according to how I've understood stewardship, we would not choose leaders only according to tithing because some people tithe just to get positions. I would choose elders and leaders according to offering. Because offering really shows the sacrifice and the true presence of the character of God. Your obligation to God in tithing is not more important than your obligation to man. Oh, you didn't get that. Listen to me. Your obligation to God in tithing is not more important than your obligation to man. It's like you saying the first four commandments are more important than the last six. Man to man. Where is your budget for the poor? Now let me tell you something about the poor. Very quickly. I'm not going to read every verse. Deuteronomy 11, 15, 15, 11 says, The poor shall always be amongst you. I think I'm going to end with this. Um, is there a child in here? Children are not here. Okay, maybe if there's no child, the nearest to a child is... Is you. <laughs> Deuteronomy 15, 11. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Deuteronomy 15, 11 says, The poor shall always be amongst you. Why did God bring the poor? Some are maimed. Some are, are poor. They are born in poor. Is, is God looking to, to, 
for people to, to feel sorry for others, sometimes God seems cruel because the poor are there and we, they look pitiful because we're not doing our duty. But let me show you why God brought the poor to this world. Can you all see me? Can you see me? What is godliness? Godliness and, and let's talk about the love of God. What is the love of God? What is the character of God? The character of God is love. How do we see it? God took men who had sinned and had fallen short and brought him up to be at the level of God. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. You do know that we are co-heirs. Are you aware that when Jesus died for us, he's going to take us all the way up to heaven, to the throne? Are you aware of that? This is God taking a man who had fallen, bringing him up to his level. That's why it's, John says, oh, what manner of love that we should be called the children, co-heirs. Now, why are the poor there? The poor are there to give us an opportunity to exercise godliness. You see a man down there in need. And through your giving and your love, you bring them up to your level. Love your God as yourself. So the poor are there for God's people to be able to demonstrate godliness. There are opportunities every day for you to be able to exercise what? Godliness. Are you understanding me? Now, I don't have time to, to say what I was going to say. Sit down. But let me end by saying this. Job, in his testimony, says um, in, in Job 29, verse 7 to 12, I had respect where I was. I, I was so well respected because of what I did for the poor. But let me tell you something. Tithing and offering is not what God is interested in. 10 plus 10 is not what God is interested in. The New Testament does not talk about tithing much. Why? Because the New Testament Christian is an all to Jesus, I surrender. When, when Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19 was converted, he started off at 50%. I give half of my wealth to the poor. And the other half, and, and, and then I will restore whoever I stole from. Fourfold. Do you remember? Now the last verse I'm going to read is Acts chapter 4, verse 31 to 35. Then I sit down. I want you to see that God is not interested in tithing and offering. God is not interested in 10 plus 10. That's just a, a method that he gives in order to give you an opportunity to character build until you can give all to Jesus, I surrender. So he's not looking for 10 or 10 plus 10. He is looking for all of you. But you cannot all get there unless you start with 10 plus 10. And then you end up like the Kellogg's Foundation, like, Col like Palmolive, Colgate, Palmolive, who ended up giving 90% of their income. When you start with 10, you are able to take the next step. You, then you give 10 plus 5, 10 plus 10, 10 plus 11, 10 plus 15. Some people give 10 plus 30, 10 plus 50 until you give all to Jesus. Now, this is the culmination of the gospel. I said Acts chapter 4 from verse 31. Let's read from verse 31. I want you to see what the New Testament church had become after they understood why God instituted tithing and offering. It was not for Levites. It was not for pastors. It was not to make things tough. It was for character building so that eventually you will say, take the world, but give me Jesus. And when they had prayed. And when they had prayed. The place was shaken where they were assembled together. The place was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Come on, keep going to 35. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart. One heart. And of one soul. One soul. Neither said any of them that ought 
of the things which he possessed was, was his theirs. own. Yes. But they had all things common. Yes. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Come on. And great grace was upon them. What happened? Neither was there any among them that Who lacked. lacked. Yes. For as many as were possessors of lands of or lands, houses, of houses sold them. Hallelujah. And brought the pieces of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And what? And distribution was made unto every man according as he has need. This is not 10%. The Bible says when the Spirit had filled them, they would look around, the church would say, so and so has got cancer. They have cancer. They would go and sell cars. They would go and do whatever was needed in order to take care of each other. But the Bible here is saying they were not giving 10%. They went and sold houses. And they sold land and brought them at the feet and said, what else do you need for this gospel? Because we are only pilgrims down here. None were lacking because what elder uh, has, Ochola, what elder anybody else has was common to all. And they reached the all to Jesus. I surrender. But as long as every man is selfish and looking after their own things, and uh, some are even saying we're not bringing our tithe, we're directing our tithe elsewhere. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I'm not political. I'm not in this church. I don't know your problems, but I just know that God owns this world. And all he wants from you is not your money. He wants all of you. So you can say, all to Jesus, I surrender. Is there any who want to reach all to Jesus? I surrender. Can you stand up? Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are grateful for your goodness. We see now that tithing and offering are not fundraising programs. We see now that even when you bring church building programs, you are not looking for wise ways to just raise money, but you are looking for wise ways to build our characters. So if the elders go to politicians and elsewhere to look for money for building churches, they would have lost the plot. Because character building is supposed to happen to every member. And that is why this has to be done by every member. And not one member doing for all. We should not be happy and say amen when one man contributes for the whole camp meeting. Because the others will remain unbuilt with no characters that have been built. Oh Lord, we thank you for your plan of salvation. You knew that the world would hold us. You knew the world would occupy us and money would be our master. And that's why you brought tithing and offering. Help us to learn to give and to trust in you. And to have faith that whatever we give... You always return, but with more and with pressed down and shaken together and running over. And those things that you give to us are not burdensome. They make rich, but they add no sorrow. And so help Central Church. They are going through many things, but I know at the center of it is worship. Help us to realize that only you should be worshipped. And we should abandon all and say all to Jesus. I surrender. As you are having mercy on Central Church, remember that I am not preaching because I have overcome on the things I am preaching. I know you send me because you want me to hear what you are also teaching to others. So as you bless them, bless me also in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you say, church, for that message? The message that has come out very clearly is about love. Love is the take-home message for all of us. And God has told us to do it practically. Be blessed all. Thank you, Elder, for your message. I welcome the Nyaga brothers for a special item.
God is good. We shall all join in the, we will lead you to sing the hymn uh, 341 to God be the glory. And it's just a summary of God's amazing grace. Stanza one talks about justification, stanza two, sanctification, and stanza three, glorification. So we pray that he blesses you. You can also sing it in your own tongue, but we'll sing it in the national anthem. Ah, national language. <laughs> God bless you all. Mungu atukuzwe kwa mambo maku upendo wake ulitupa Yesu ali ejitoa maisha ya Sifu, msifu, watu wafurahi Na uje kwa baba, kwa yesu mwana Ukam tukuze kwa Mambo maku Ali hakikisha Wokovu wetu Lakini zaidi Ajabu kubwa Yesu atakuja na tutamona msifu msifu dunia sikia msifu msifu watu wa Kwa baba, kwa Yesu mwana Ukam tukuze kwa mambo Shall we all join in English? Praise the Lord Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the earth hear His voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord 